Hey guys, I'm just extending five here, and today I will be doing a review of the LEGO Star Wars 40407 Death Star 2 battle. This set was a free gift with purchase um, for the May the 4th event in 2020, which might be this year when this is coming out. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, if you spent a certain amount of money on that date, I'm guessing probably a purchase of $75 or more, you did get this set for free. Um, this set does contain 235 pieces, and according to Brickset at the time of filming this review, which is about mid-June, so a little bit after the sets come out, um, this set is currently worth $27 new, according to Brickset. So without further ado, let's get into the review. As far as the box of this set is concerned, pretty standard stuff going on here with the set info over there. Um, and really, there's not much else to point out besides that this is the box that opens like this for the top this whole front section kind of folds out and it's held together by some tape on the bottom here but really other than that there's not anything unusual to point out about this set um, as far as the box is concerned so that is that Included in the set is the box, the instruction manual, and three unnumbered bags of pieces. As far as the instructions are concerned, the only slightly unusual thing is that instead of the product feedback survey on the back of this instruction manual, you have this picture of the set with shots from episode 6, um, the yeah, Return of the Jedi. That is the one. Yes, that is the one. Um, other than that, this is a pretty normal instruction manual. So the build here, as you can see, is a kind of diorama style build of the Death Star 2 battle, of course focusing in on this A-Wing here and this TIE Interceptor kind of going at it on the outsides of the in-construction Death Star, so that's what we'll be taking a look at in this segment, because um, that's what you get in the set, so spinning it around a bit so you guys can get a look at some of the different angles, um, and some of the stuff can be angled around a bit, so you can get some slightly more <laughs> ideal um, looks at this thing. Um, of course, you can, a lot of, again, because it's bars and stuff, a lot of this stuff is angleable, so you can change how it looks if you have one of these in hand. Um, of course, this is kind of a diorama set, um, so there's not really any play features besides posing things, um, which is pretty standard stuff. Um, you can tilt the A-wing back and forth, um, you can tilt the TIE interceptor around, you can mess with the wings a bit, and you can move this cannon and stuff around. So, really not much in the way of play features, so um, mainly this is, again, a display style set. Um, and as far as that goes, um, I think they've overall done a pretty solid job here, and there are a couple things that we will touch on that I don't think they did super well. Um, but yeah, let's just take a closer look at this thing. Here you can see a um, nice printed 2x4 black tile LEGO Star Wars 2020. Of course, it is no longer the 20th anniversary of the theme, so we don't have that print on these diorama sets anymore um, for those events. We just have this one, um, which, I mean, I guess that's a fine thing to replace it with. It's not super special or anything, but it is what it is. Um, and of course, you do have the A-Wing little build here. Um, and I'll just take this off of the model so that we can kind of mess with it a bit. Um, really, there isn't a whole lot of functionality to this. The main functionality is you can kind of pivot the cannons on the side, but even then, just because how these kind of side panels are attached, it will just move up completely, so not really ideal. And then this little clip and bar thing is what attaches it to the actual rest of the build. Um, as far as the actual mini A-Wing looks, I think they did a decent job on this. Um, there are a couple things that aren't ideal for, you know, posability, like having these only attached on one stud. Um, it's kind of an issue because the A-Wing in Universe does not do things like this, um, so that could be a bit of a problem for some people who might want to try to pose this thing a bit more than it is in the box. Uh, but, you know, other than that, I think they did a solid job. I really do like the use of this kind of tooth piece here and clear for the cockpit, I think that works really well. Um, and, you know, overall, it's pretty solid, um... At least the more solid of the two kind of miniature vehicles included in this set. So you get that, um, and that just kind of hangs out right there. Um, you also do have this cannon, which is semi-functional. Um, you can just swivel it around and stuff. Um, you probably want to hold the base in place and just move the actual cannon itself. Um, but you can rotate the cannon. You can rotate the blasters um, up or down. Just That's how they are attached, and just on one stud each, so you can... Mess with that a bit. Um, it looks fine to me. Honestly, not really much else to point out there. Um, as far as the whole kind of scene goes, and I'm saving the worst for last in case you couldn't tell. 
Um, I think they've done a really good job here um, of representing what in, in what I'd imagine an in-progress kind of Death Star would look like, and also based on the movie, I think they've done a good job as well. But this is about what I would think something like this would look like, and that's what it does look like. The dark red is really nice and really pops out of the build quite a lot. Um, you know, it's not used everywhere, but it is used commonly enough that it just brings kind of that vibrance to the build. Um, that the other kind of diorama sets, in my opinion, didn't really have. Um, the Hoth one was pretty much all white, except for, you know, the shield generator, which was just different tone, kind of shades of colors, so, um, yeah, and just like the orange on a little bit of the snow speeder and the red on the weird looking ATAT. Um, so, you know, that was interesting. Um, the Endor one uh, had a lot of green and brown on it, and those colors don't really, you know, they go well together, but they don't really pop quite like this kind of dark red on light gray does. I think that this one really, when you look at it, it just really kind of pops out at you, which is one of the things that I like about this build in particular. Um, and, you know, of course, lots of greebling, um, lots of very nice greebling here. You can just kind of look around and see all the different greebling that they have here. You know, they've gotten this macaroni kind of piece going for the kind of piping and stuff. Um, and they do have these kind of wedge plates, I guess, cut plates, whatever you want to call them, going kind of like that. Um, my one, one of my gripes with this set, and it's not actually anything to do with the set it build itself, um, is that they've included six of one side of these. <laughs> so that's, that's kind of annoying, um, just for people who like to have, you know, so each side of this in equal numbers. Um, but, you know, it looks good on the set, and they're not obligated to include it. You know, they do what they want, so um, not too bad there. And, of course, these towers in the back, with, which are pretty much all dark red, except for some dark bluish gray kind of popping out a bit. Um, I think these also look really nice and are really well done. Um, so now we'll talk about the one thing that isn't really nice and really well done, in my opinion, and that is the TIE Interceptor build. So, as you can see, it is held on by this clip here, which is at the bottom of the wing, which t attaches to this rod piece, which kind of just hangs in there. Um, so let's take it off for a second um, and just kind of shove that all off to the side. Um, this is the miniature, or I guess micro-scale TIE Interceptor that they've included here. Um, you know, as far as the TIE Interceptor itself goes, it's a vehicle that we haven't seen really any time recently in LEGO Star Wars as a system scale set, and I don't necessarily include Major Von Reg's TIE Fighter in that. Um, you know, as far as the original trilogy ones go, 2006 was the last system scale one that we saw. Um, so, you know, this, you know, it's nice to see that LEGO still knows this vehicle exists, which is good. Um, but as far as the build itself goes, you know, there are some things to be desired here. I think these new wedge plates, cut plates, whatever you want to call them, really do help the wings out. And I think the wings look quite good. Um, the one thing that I don't think looks very good is the kind of body holding it all together. Um, this is a very shrimpy body, um, if you couldn't tell. I would have much rather they did something brick built here because I think that in going with the scale of the wings, um, this is just way too small and flimsy looking. Um, like you can even see that like the cockpit doesn't even like look like it even belongs on this ship. Um, so really, it's just the center is just too kind of small and spindly for me. Um, I would have liked something a bit more bulked up, maybe something with a bit more of a brick built kind of component, maybe using the brick with the studs on four sides. Um, to the for the center here and then just putting like some tiles or something on the top and then having some clips come out for the wings I think that could work a lot better for this thing um, But you know they tried and I can I do commend them for trying because this isn't a vehicle that we've seen in a while So it's good that they still know this thing exists But um, there is some room for improvement here. I think so I'm um, putting that back on the set as well um, Just goes on that rod right there as you can see that's where the clip goes in so you can angle this thing as well if however you want to, um, and if you want to rotate it, you can because you can rotate this rod, unlike the A-Wing, which is just kind of placed on these bars, which are more or less held in place by just how the set is built. So that is pretty much all for just looking at the set itself. Um, and as far as these diorama kind of sets go, um, I think this is probably one of, if not the best ones of this kind of style. You know, do I think a Hoth one would have probably made more sense this year with the whole it's the 40th anniversary of the Empire Strikes Back thing? Um, yeah, I do think so, but this is not bad either. So let's move in now to the conclusion of this review. So in conclusion, as far as, you know, the set itself goes, box and instructions are pretty good. You know, no issues there. Um, nice little pictures on the back of the instructions, but really nothing to talk about or worth mentioning. Um, the build overall is good. It is very visually appealing to me. 
um, and I think they use parts pretty well on here. Um, the one thing that I, again, I do say needs a bit of work is the tie interceptor. Um, the, the middle section that kind of connects the wings together is just too spindly for me, and I think that something brick built would have done a lot better there. Um, and you know, that's that's pretty much my only gripe with the whole set as far as things go. Um, otherwise, I think they've done a pretty good job here, and this definitely does do a good job representing the Death Star 2 battle from Return of the Jedi, so props to LEGO for that. Um, and of course, as far as value and stuff goes, um, this set, according to Brickset New, currently at the time of filming, is worth $27. Um, so, of course, with 235 pieces, um, and of course the price per part thing is not necessarily a law, but it is just, it is a decent metric, um, at least. It's, it's not, you know, always what we go with when determining value. Um, as far as parts go, um, I think this would fall between $20 and $25, so maybe in, if you're in that camp, $27 is not too far off the money. Um, but as far as just volume of stuff here and what like what we have as this thing, I feel like this is at most a $20 set, probably even closer to a $15 set in all honesty. Um, and maybe that's, you know, my, my old kind of Lego collecting... Um, looking at the prices of old sets, kind of nostalgically speaking, um, but I, I do think that this is probably probably would be somewhere between fifteen and twenty dollars in value as far as just volume of stuff here and what you have. Um, you know, I think that twenty seven dollars is a definitely pushing it a bit for this thing, even if you're going by price per part. Um, most of the parts in here um, are very small um, detail pieces. Um, real, most of the parts here don't really go bigger than one by two in size. Um, of course, there are some larger things like the large bricks and plates that kind of go across and hold this thing together. Um, but most of it is just small little detailing pieces that really are just small to small medium in size. Um, so I can't really say that this would be necessarily worth $25 based on price per part. So I think, honestly, for value, this thing falls in between um, $20 and $15. Of course, U.S. prices. Um, probably probably about at 17 I think, is where I would place this thing. That would be, like, the price that I'd be willing to pay for it. At most, I'd be willing to put, pay probably $20 for this thing if I wanted to buy it and it was a standalone set. Um, that is another thing I will briefly mention, um, is that when the image for this set came out, and I made a video about that, so I'll link in the description if you want to go watch my May the 4th, 2020 set image video. Um, when this set came out, you know, I said it looks cool, but I probably won't be buying anything on May the 4th. Um, and I didn't actually buy anything on May the 4th, so you might be wondering how I ended up with this. Um, and the thing is, is that my dad also collects LEGO Star Wars, and he bought enough stuff on May the 4th to get two of these. So I got the, this one off of him, and he has another one. So that's, why I'm, that's how I'm able to make this video. I didn't spend any money on May the 4th, um, because nothing that came out or that was out on May the 4th was either... A, stuff I was interested in, or B, stuff that I was interested but that I already had like six or so of. Cough, cough, A-T-A-P, cough, cough. Um, so I didn't spend any money, but I, I got this off of him, so that's why I have it. I did not spend money on this thing for the secondary market to make this video for you guys. But um, yeah, so as far as value goes, I think $17 would be optimal price for this thing. Of course, you can find it for less. Good on you. But if not, you know, $20 max would probably be what I'd be willing to pay for this thing, having it in hand and seeing it and stuff. Um, and of course, if you're not a fan of the diorama sets, you probably don't need to pick this thing up. Um, you know, you're not missing out on too much, but if you like these things and you kind of like the display value from them, this is probably one of the better ones. Um, maybe you want to work on the tie interceptor a bit because it does have its issues like we talked about. Um, and of course, if you, if you agree with my stance on those issues, then feel free to go ahead and modify it. Um, I'm not going to be making a mod video or anything for this set. Um, so, you know, I've given you some ideas about what you might want to do to it, but that's ultimately up to you, should you choose to go that route. Um, but really, that is going to more or less wrap up this review. In conclusion, you know, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not unhappy with this set. I think this is a pretty nice um, model. Again, it does have its issues. Let's not forget that it does have its issues, but... I think they've done a good job here of representing the material um, and just kind of capturing what this what what this kind of portion of the Death Star 2 battle is like. So um, that is going to wrap up this review, excluding the speed build and the extra pieces. If you want to see those, they're coming up right after this segment, so stick around. Um, if not, thank you so much for watching. 
Um, and yeah, that is all I have for this review outside of those two segments. So here, here you go. If you want to stick around, um, here is the speed build. extra pieces included in this set. Pretty nice selection here. Um, out of these, the ones that stand out to me are the two paddle piece kind of pieces and the light bluish gray and the black. Those are nice to get. Roller skate light bluish gray is also nice as well as the kind of stud with the little bar on the top as well. Um, overall, very nice selection of extra pieces. As far as the building experience went, it was pretty simple. About what you would probably expect with this set. Um, nothing was really boring, and I didn't have too many issues, if any at all. I don't even think I had any issues, honestly, building this set. So it's pretty good. Um, but that will be concluding this review. Um, if you enjoyed it, feel free to engage with the video in any way you can. Other than that, thank you everybody so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.